joined by a star that kicked off 2010 at number one. It's your X Factor winner, Mr. Joe McKelvey. Hello, hi, welcome. Thank you, thanks very much. Um, let's start by talking uh, about the new single, Someone yes. Wear Me Up. Yes. It's on the new Narnia film. Well, it's, I've actually, the, the Someone Wear Me Up is my single, and I've also recorded another track, which is called Days of Place For Us, and that's the soundtrack. But everybody thinks that the Someone Wake Me Up, but it features, the Someone Wake Me Up video features the Narnia film. Um, Film, uh -huh. but it isn't necessarily the soundtrack. But it's all known yet, so it's very exciting. Okay, and can we get on to the other song as well then? Yeah, it's a B side to the single, which is out now. So if you buy the single in a store, you get it. Um, there's a place for us as the B side. Isn't that the song that um, Carrie Underwood written the most night? Well, she wrote it especially for the film, which is um, really exciting. That obviously I've had a song written by her for me, and also that it's in the Narnia film, and it's, it's it features quite a big bit at the end, and. It's, it surrounds the film, it's great. How did you get involved in the Narnia film then? Who asked you? I was approached by Fox um, and they said, we're really interested in you being a part of the film, would you like to do it? And I was like, yes, definitely. Um, and then it kind of just, it pinballed from there and it went on and on. And for a while I didn't hear anything and I thought, um, you know, maybe it's just not happening anymore. And then before I knew it, I was in the studio recording the song. And then last week I was in, uh, in the premiere with my name on the credit, so it was amazing. Was it, was, you must have been to a lot of the premieres though by now, right? I have, but it's more special when, I've never performed at a premiere and I've performed at the premiere and it's more special when, well it was obviously my song at the end and then to see my name on the credits was, it was, it was brilliant. Have you always been a Narnia fan when yeah. you were a kid? I love Narnia. I've always read the books, um, I've seen all the films, and so it makes it even more special that I'm a fan, you know, like, instead of just doing a film that I don't really know about. Of course. Do you, do you ever fancy, like, when you watch it on the big screen, do you ever fancy a crack at the big screen yourself? Yeah, I'd give it a go. I don't know whether that'd be any good. Um, I'd try, but it's one of those things that takes so much time out of a schedule. I mean, it takes something that, you, you, you block me in for a year with just film, film, film all the time. So it would have to be at the right time, and I'd probably want it to involve music so that I didn't miss me singing. Okay, well some people get it right, like Madonna's got a few out of them, you can get the Mariah Carey glitter kind of... I like that film. <laughs> everybody, says, everybody says that film's really bad, I think it's alright. <laughs> okay, well we need to find a glitter for you. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> alright, should we take a look at the video? Yes. Someone wear me up, chat show. on Trash or TV, someone wake me up. It's been uh, an amazing 12 months for you. Yeah. If you look back kind of November 2009, you, you hadn't won X Factor right then. Did you ever think you'd have a hit album, number one single, be an X Factor winner this time? Not at all. Not at all. I mean, the, the past year has been amazing. And to think now, looking at the new series, that it's the final already, I just don't know where this year has gone. It's, it's just flew. But it's been amazing. I've experienced so many amazing things. I've got the album out. Second single now off the album, which is really exciting, and it's just, it's, 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 it's amazing. Have you, have you been a bit jealous watching this year's X Factor when you thought it was me last year? Oh. Um, jealous in the sense of that I'd like to perform every week, but not jealous in the sense of the pressure that they're under. I mean, last year we were under a lot of pressure as well. I'd like to go back and perform every week, but as the winner, not as a contestant. Not through that it's again. not really possible, though. <laughs> you went back to perform, obviously, on this year's series with yes. auditions. That yes. must have been nerve-wracking. I didn't expect to be as scared as I was. I thought it would have been easier, and I didn't sleep for about four days before, um, or eat. And it was, yeah, it was very, very nerve-wracking. And Cheryl was obviously a mentor on The X Factor. Um, is that, explain, when you've won The X Factor, is that it then? Does she still kind of look after we you? Speak, we, I mean, she's not really mentor anymore, but we speak a lot, we're good friends, and um, have each other's numbers, we text each other all the time, and it's hard to catch up as much as we'd like to, because obviously she's always one place and I'm the other. But um, we speak regularly, which is nice that we've managed to keep the, the friendship up. And you obviously had a, a North East connection. Yes. Um, are you, do you still base yourself in the North East then, or are you down there? Kind of. It's been half and half. I've got a place in London, I've got my house at home, like the family home, um, and I just split my time between. Whenever I'm off, I'm up home, and whenever I'm working, I'm down here. So, a bit of both. We wanted to check, if it's alright with you, um, just to check that you haven't lost your roots. So we give you, because I went to university in Sunderland. Right, well. okay. So I'd like to check that you haven't lost your uh, North East roots. So I was going to give you a little North East quiz, if that's okay. Let's go for it. So see how you go. I've got a few questions. Um, okay, so tell us what is the big market? The big market is a, um, it's like a big nightclub area that gets a bit crazy on a Friday night. You probably would have to wear armed material to go in there late at night. It's quite um, dangerous. And it's always like, even if you go the middle of winter, minus five, all the girls got the boot tube yeah. on, the miniskirts, they don't care. They don't it's, a, it's an experience, so, but be warned, it's 
Yeah, it's a bit crazy, but it's a good night out. Yeah, it's a good night out. <laughs> um, what is a stotty? A stotty is like a big bread bun that you have, um, you can have ham in it, you can have um, saveloy stotty, which is like a sausage kind of sandwich, and it's a big stotty with loads of flour on, it's really nice. Um, what is the name of the Sunderland Football Stadium? Stadium of Light. And I was going to say something else there, but I'm <laughs> wrong. Are you, are you a Newcastle fan or something, or do you not care? Uh, no, I'm, I'm a Newcastle fan. Okay, yeah. okay. What's the difference then, tell us, between a Geordie and a Mackham? Well, a Mackham is from Sunderland, and they have a much more... Um, how do I put this? It's quite a, a strange accent. Um, so they say, the, whose keys are these? It's uh, what? Wheeze. If they would say, whose keys are those? Okay. They go, whose keys are these? <laughs> we lost. There you go. Okay. And then a Geordie is, is um, obviously a Newcastle accent. Mm -hmm. How you doing, why I'm on, all that kind of stuff. Okay. We've got a few slang words for you then. Um, they're quite easy, I'm sure you're going to get these. Um, canny, explain what canny is. All right, canny can be, um, it depends how you use it. You can say somebody's canny, yeah. which means they're really nice, or you can say, well, yeah, it's kind of just like a, a, a word for saying somebody's nice or something's nice. The weather's canny, she's canny, um, canny good that. So the canny, it can be like, that's good that, canny good. So kind of cool. Yeah. Kind of cool. yeah. What about geet? Geet. Um, it's kind of like a word for big. <laughs> so that was, or, or, it's, it's hard to explain, but you would say something like, I was geet scared. So I was really scared. Or, scared. or you can say that was geet massive. Okay. Which would be like, it can be big or really, it's quite strange. And then the last one, scran. Scran's food. Scran's food? Yes. Okay, I think you passed, you're still a journey, so you're all good. You, you've not lost it yet in the big London, you're fine. We're going to play Ambitions in a sec. Yes. Um, first of all, let's talk about a video, because you got to do your little... Yeah, I did a dance routine, that. which was really exciting. Um, yeah, because I think everyone kind of expected that you were going to come back with like a big ballad and stuff. And yeah, and at first I did, but then we really took the time, looked for a different direction, and I wanted to show that I could perform as well as, you know, just stand behind a mic and sing. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, let's go all out, let's, let's throw a dance routine in. So we got a choreographer and we'll, we'll put a little routine to it. And it was, uh, not probably a lot of people know it, but it was originally like a, a Norwegian massive hit for yes. a band called Donkey Boy. It was number one in Nor Norway for something like uh, 20 weeks or something, it was crazy. But um, they're quite a big band out there. So how did, you, how did you hear of it? How did you get to record it? I heard it, um, I got it sent to an email from somebody at the label and they said, oh, I've just heard this song on the internet, see what you think. And I loved it straight away. But my, if you listen to the versions, mine's slightly more high energy. It's kind of more dancier. Yeah. So when I recorded it, we did it to a basic track, and then the producers went away and worked on the track and really built it up. And as soon as I heard it, I was just like, oh, wow, I love it. It has to be the single. And I had performance ideas. It was just really exciting. But I did well. Yeah, let's check that out. Sam Fisher, yes. John Kelvin. with John McKeldin and the auditions and uh, we've got a lot of our um, viewers to tweet in with Great. questions so if you don't mind I'm going to yeah, go for it those. and Tara Bunt wants to know what's your favourite all time song? <sighs> um, probably one of Michael Jackson's um, Thriller or The Way You Made Me Feel Oh The Way You Made Me Feel Yeah Amazing. I love that one Great song um, A tweet from Hayley Marie Tenzel um, asked Joe who you would love to duet with I love to do it with Beyonce. I'm a massive, massive fan. Um, and I just think she's absolutely amazing. So that would be a huge dream come true if I could do that. You should have been the X Factor the year before. I know. That's, you see, if I could rewind time. <laughs> You'd have been singing Listen <laughs> with Beyonce. Yeah, I don't know how fancy singing that song. But you got George Michael, though, so that was Yeah, amazing. I know. That was incredible. Yeah, good play. Um, following on from that, another one of our follower, followers called Ultimate Show Call um, says, Would you ever do it with your mentor, Cheryl? Yeah, I'd like, I mean, obviously it would have to be the right kind of song, um, and yeah, it would be nice to do something like that. After being on X Factor together, it would be nice. So, maybe. Maybe, we'll see. Um, quite a few tweets here, uh, including from Lisa McAllister and Jay Babbitt, asking, can they get hold of a dual calendar for 2011? I've been getting asked this question for about six months now, um, whether I'm doing a calendar. Let's clear, I'm, unfortunately, I'm not doing a calendar, um, but if I do do a calendar, You'll be the first people to know. Are you doing some modelling or something though these days? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, something might come from it. There might be a calendar sometime. I don't, nothing's happening yet though. Amy uh, Miranda tweeted, if you hadn't won the X Factor, what would you be doing now? I would still, what would I be doing? Yeah, I would be doing a performing arts degree. 
I had a last year of college last year, mm -hmm. which I finished after I completed the course after X Factor, um, and then I would have went to college, um, university. So you'd be studying? I would be. This is better though, right? Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> <laughs> you got the better deal. Um, Shelley Johnston, uh, which country would you most like to visit and why? I'd really like to go to Australia, mm -hmm. or I've always wanted to go to so many places to be honest. There is so many. It, I like to go to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be nice. Have you got any plans for Japan to, yet? To kind of release in other countries or other churches? Um, yeah, maybe. So we'll see. Um, there's, there, we've been discussing things and we'll, when we come back in January after Christmas, mm -hmm. we'll decide what we're going to do, whether we're going to go anywhere. I mean, it takes a lot of planning. Right. So, but I'd love to. I'd love to go around the world with the album. It would be very exciting. Brilliant. Next year, maybe then. Yeah, we'll see. Um, Emily Watson and quite a stack of others want to know, are you going on tour next year? There's no definite plans yet, but um, I'd, again, I'd absolutely love to. So I'm sh I'll be pushing to see if I can get out on tour. And watch this space. Yes. Um, Lucy Brown tweeted, Happy Christmas, and what do you sing in the shower? Happy Christmas to you, Lucy. And what do I sing in the shower? That can range from anything. Um, it's, not a, it's not an enjoyable... It's not an enjoyable sound, me singing in the shower. It's <laughs> kind of different. It, yeah. <laughs> It's the place where I can kind of test how high I can sing or how low it comes out a bit of a disaster. Um, what do I sing in the shower? A bit of Rihanna, a bit of Lady Gaga, a bit of Neil. You just sing a bit of Bruno Mars when you walk too? Yeah, Bruno Mars, that's always a good shower song. Okay, maybe do that one then. Um, we're going to say goodbye in a sec then, and just before we um, play out with um, your first single, I yes. uh, want to find out what you're doing for Christmas and New Year this year, any plans? Yeah, I'm actually going skiing with all my family. Oh cool, Yeah. Where um, Somewhere in Europe hopefully. Um, I haven't booked it yet, so we'll see. But I'm, I go every year, so we're going to book it and go off there. There's about ten of us go away. Amazing. Do you normally do you normally go away at Christmas then, or are you traditional? I've, well, I'm going to be at home for Christmas. I'm going to go the week after. But this year will be this. Yeah, one of the first years I've been at home for Christmas. We normally go away every year for Christmas. Yeah. You still get to have the turkey and all the trimmings and everything. Oh, right? I, it's quite funny actually. I am. Um, everybody asks. So do you still have a uh, Christmas dinner when you go away? And when we go skiing. We end up having something like spaghetti bolognese or something for Christmas dinner because, yeah. well, because the restaurants on the sides of the mountain do all these kind of foods, different foods. They don't necessarily do a Christmas dinner. Yeah. And when you're skiing, you just want carbs and something quick. Yes. So it's yes, some energy. Yes, but spaghetti bolognese for Christmas dinner. Okay. But I always have one when I get back, so I don't miss out. Oh, so you get two Christmas yeah. dinners, really. And then, is there anything special you want for Christmas then? Um. I like an iPad. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. And the New Year's resolutions? Anything? I need to stop buying meals. Bad habit. Yeah. It's bad. Shocking. Joe, thank you for coming in. Pleasure. Thank um, you for having us. Good luck with the single. Thank you. Good luck with everything next year. Thanks very much. And um, we'll leave with the daily single. Do you want to introduce it? This is The Climb. I hope you enjoy it. Have a good Christmas. <laughs>